This is the art of start-up war. And my name is Brian McMahon, your host and sensei. Here is what we know. 98% of startups will fail every single day. And mostly due to reasons outside your control. The Expert Dojo Startup Accelerator, we look to even up the playing field by sitting down with the greatest minds in startup investment right here in our studio in Silicon Beach, where we look to shine a light on your path to success. Now, our guests each week have invested millions of dollars into startups and are the most respected investors in the world. Now, they share all they know with you, the listener. So join us on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, starting off your week winning the war against startup failure. Welcome back. It's Tuesday morning. It is 10 o'clock. It is Brian again from Expert Dojo. We are, of course, on the art of startup war. And I am speaking to, actually today, I'm speaking to a hybrid. I'm speaking to a really respected investor in the local community. I'm speaking to a massive influencer in the local community. I'm speaking to a man who owns multiple workspaces where investors and startups go to. And I'm also speaking to an entrepreneur who has taken his journey across seas, across lands, to build up his own empire of workspaces here in Santa Monica. So, Oli, where the heck do I start? I'm also talking to my friend, Listen, right? My no, buddy. I, think, I think the f- number one thing is you're actually talking to a friend. Because yeah. I've known you for many, many years, and we've both seen each other's journeys grow have, in the last right? five or six years from very different and similar backgrounds. Yeah, it's actually. incredible. Where did we first meet? Um, I don't know, somewhere in Santa Monica on Main hey, Street. it was right back. Right, right back in the day. When I first started doing, um, when I actually first started my first workspace, I think very shortly after, you came through the door. And help. we became friends. And you helped us. Very, very correct. And it was at a time when I was working previously over with my friends over at the Satellite, who are also another wonderful provider and really nice people, and then um, came and saw the village. And you had this, this, this view of the future, which is that a workspace shouldn't just be functional. It shouldn't just be about having a desk. It shouldn't just be about having the convenience of somewhere to go. It should be a place which is just as comfortable and just as fun as your own house and apartment and the people surrounding you should be the same types of friends as you would go out and meet in a bar. Is that right? And, it, and, it, and obviously it's super cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think you've said it very nicely, but also it's different. You've got to feel as comfortable. It's developing a space, which is you want to go into work in the morning. You love coming in because you're inspired by your surroundings. You're inspired by what's going on around you for what you're doing for your own business. You're getting complete support in that. And you're enjoying the place that you're in. It is cool. It's a cool place to be. The village is one of the, I would say, I would say, and I'm not not biased here, but I think we've got the coolest workspace in America. Mm -hmm. And if not one of the coolest in the world. And I actually, I feel very proud in saying Yeah, by far. I really do. By far. And, and, and the really beautiful thing about what you've created is, look, you have two choices. And we're going to talk in a second about why collaborative workspaces are so tremendously important to entrepreneurs who are looking for investment in the community. But firstly, it was really interesting how you uniquely put the space together. And, and I think you have a choice, as do we all, which is, do we create another Me Too? which is another workspace similar to all of them out there. I won't say I, I use any names due to disrespect, but I think we can all guess who the chains are, whether they're trendy and new or whether they've been around for a long time. Or do I create something absolutely unique? Almost like if we put it into a hotel context, do I want to create a Marriott chain or a Hilton chain? Or do I want to create that hotel which is in the coolest part of the city that when I go into one room, it's different from another room. And when I sit in the lobby, I know I'm in such a hip happening place that I don't want to go. And you chose that second path. And and whenever we have entrepreneurs coming in here, I always appeal to them to find that differentiation, to find that one unique brand that whenever anyone walks into one of Ollie's places, whether it's the village up on Olympic or whether it's down just off Main, they always know that they've walked into that very unique setting that's been created by you. 
Do you like that? I I love that. I'm I'm using that as part of my marketing completely straight away. Okay, you say it better than anybody yeah, else. But, I, I could, but really, can I say thank you very much? I mean, we str- we strive, but I want to go back to the people who listen. Who there are people who listen who are looking for money and starting businesses and coming up with ideas. And as you said, that is something that. I know about because I've done it myself and I've seen it and not only know about and I know from sitting on from the other side of it and watching creating a business which then then had the opportunity to see that all happening within. I've seen and I'm what I love to see is hundreds of millions of dollars have been raised by companies and gone through our space like really unbelievable stuff. Which is wonderful. And I want to talk I want to really about am- that really really amazing and I see and I see what everyone's doing and I and it's whether not even just millions I had a, a wine company a wine company for instance just an example in Santa Monica. I just spoke to the guy the CEO last week. He was uh, at L'Oreal and I had you know an idea for a business to start it off and join the space because he didn't have you know, I'm going to go, I'm going out there. I need an office. Like, I'm going to hire somebody. I need to get an office. I don't want that much cost. And I said to him, in your last six months since you've been at the village, you started with literally not that much because it was like your first office. Yep. He's now said to me, we're now making $20,000 a month. You know, straight away, he's hiring more people. Beautiful. He's getting, his staff is now going up to six members of staff Beautiful. from one. And it all happened within six months. And I love I love seeing that. And I also love seeing people raise multi-million dollars or work on projects, which a lot of money has been pulled into in, in, in this amazing environment of Los Angeles that we're so privileged to see and, and you're see touching, what goes on. you're touching on two very important points. One point is that when investors are meeting with anyone starting a business, they judge you. And they judge you the same way as your wife or husband judges you the first time they see you. They don't want to judge you, but they look at the shoes you're wearing, the trousers you have on, the shirt you have on. And in a business sense, when you're with investors, they judge how much of a company you are. So if you walk into a large investor and you say, I want to raise a million dollars. But you walk in there in a pair of khakis, you got a t-shirt on, you got flip-flops on, you've got no office and you're working at a Starbucks. It's not that you can't get it. It's just that the probability of you getting it is more difficult because you're portraying an image that doesn't is not congruent with a million dollars being spent correctly. So the first point you touched on there, which is that he came into you so that he could showcase an image of trust to the investors that he was subsequently going to go to. Because he's not going to a shabby outfit. He's going to L'Oreal, right? And he's going to other clients to create that environment. So number one, as startups... First tip from Ollie today is make sure that within the co-working and the workspace environment that you create the image that you need to create. Now, you also touched on a second point, which I want to go a little bit deeper into, which is the different people that you bring into the village and which maybe in, in cities around the world where the village workspace isn't available, maybe there's another workspace that's available there, that there are really good events in those space and really good investors and people walking through. How, how have you seen startups interact with those events and with the investors and really how should they do it for the best best uh, possibility of success well i look at the events and the investing as part and parcel it's two things events for us are things that we're hosting in industries which i think are exciting industries like yourself do here like you know if there's something with the cannabis at the moment we'll have those if it was bitcoin we've done those whether it's property or any different parts of different industries virtual reality we've done podcasting you see you're bringing but within that you're bringing investors that are always part of the village yeah there are always investors coming in and out of the village there are investors who are members of the village and that's also part of your you know as you become a member you're becoming a member to have access to with any everybody within the space um and also there are a bunch of investors coming in and out because of the bill because of the because of the companies we've got in the space the opportunities and the opportunities that they can get. so there's you've got to remember we've got crowdfunding companies in there we do like one of the leading crowdfunding companies in America is in our space they themselves are getting all businesses that are coming in to look to crowdfund their events of course i've got sports companies we've got tv co- so there's it's, there's a lot of merging of disciplines that go on and as a result investors are always in and out, okay, of this by asking what's going on and who's in. And we, we're also all about 
making sure that any member of the space we know what they want we can you know we, you, you know we we know what people want so it's a bit like dating sometimes if people put in their needs like and they put it really simple it's, it's, if you, every member could say to us this is what i'm good at to give advice to somebody somebody else could say and this is what i'm looking for and when we meet the right people we can easily match make people together you know to help people it's just that community thing, isn't it? No, Basically. I like that. It's vi- remember, and, it takes a village, and that's how we kind of look at it. And you know, you you know, you made me think of there. Remember that old Bruce Willis movie where the kid says, "I see dead people everywhere." Like it's the this creep, the creepy movie, the, the creepy, creepy movie. Uh, well, right? I reminded you just reminds the you of the awesome creepy, creepy movie. movie. That's like here we are sitting in the <laughs> fridge, you know, in the podcast <laughs> fridge. Doctor Ock outside, our engineer, and now you're talking about dead children talking. We're talking about yeah. the hottest yeah. fridge <laughs> in the world. But there are some entrepreneurs who see investors everywhere. And then there are many entrepreneurs who do not see investors everywhere. So, and this is a really, really important point. There are many of you, and and I think hopefully before you hear this podcast, after you hear this podcast, you think differently. There are many of you who just go onto Crunchbase, go onto AngelList, look up the investor, send out direct tweets or LinkedIn invites, whatever else. And you know, it's okay. You're probably not going to get anyone from it, but it's okay. It gives you something to do on a Monday afternoon. And then there are others of you who realize that actually an investor, an angel, A venture capitalist, they are merely just names. They're names that we give to people so that we can categorize them. But they all fit into a much more interesting bucket, which is accredited investors. And anyone who's an accredited investor can choose. And that's somebody who has over a million dollars in in cash or liquid assets, or they earn over over $200,000 a year, of which there are many, many, many tens of millions of Americans who fit into that bucket. Now, every single one of those people has a dilemma. And their dilemma is, how do I best invest my money so that I can retire as quickly as I can? Now, if they have that dilemma, they obviously have equities, they have their bank, they have the other things that they can do. But startup investing is an opportunity that's there as well. And All of these people are potentially good opportunities to be able to invest in your company. So by being around a co-working space, especially, especially, especially when it's a community and by making it obvious to other people that you have a great growing business that can go out there and specifically mentioning it to every single person that you speak to in a non-desperate way, then you are putting yourself out in the universe for success. I truly believe it. What do you think, Ollie? I think that's very good. I want to add. It's really tough being in a startup. It, you've got a lot of things going on. You're a visionary. You've got ideas. You're putting your life on the line because you're putting your finance. You put, you're all in when you're in a startup. You're all in. And all in means that you're constantly not just looking for money, but you're honing your business and making changes and learning about how to make your business better, how to make your business plan, how to make your pitch better. What? Because you know and I know that the minute, however good your business is, you might just meet people who simply don't want to invest in that. It's not their kind of investment. Doesn't yeah. mean the business isn't bad. But yeah, but but the thing is. You constantly want to be around people that you're going to be meeting that will help you meet people, but also people that are going to help you make your business better, that you for look sure. better. That your business, you're still working it. It isn't just sitting around waiting you're right. for money. It's not just investors. Con- it's not just about investments. It's about also investing within your own business to grow your own business and how you do it. A part of that is the the the, the fundraising and the capital. It's It's everything because it doesn't ever stop. Um, and that's why being in a in a in a professional workspace in amongst a community of people who are there to help and d- d- that you can learn from where you've got people who are both in it from disciplines that you are, but also you see people who have made it and done it. And you can just find other skill sets there, which you might need to ask people of. You're a, if startups, they're not that big. You, you need to have a group of people that gives you access to, oh, I need some help with marketing, or I need some help with, the, how do I present these numbers? Who could I ask And in sometimes here? you can get oh, these things oh, at a lower cost, I need a right? bit of a legal thing. Oh, there's Larry over there, who's an amazing lawyer who's done this. I can just ask him. Why can I just ask him? Because you're members and you're there to help each other because that's what it's about. 
you know, and that's and that's why it's vital to be a part of try to be a part of a good community when you're doing this because it's very very important. I agree. You know, very very important. I agree. And, and get out. You can't hide behind your LinkedIn and your tweets. So much of business is done by turning up and being at these amazing places of business. And this is what people don't understand. I continually get approached by startups who will say, I need access to VC, venture capitalists. I need access to high-level angels. But what nobody realizes in, the vast majority of early stage investing are done by people who don't have a title. They are your father's friend. They are the person who has been a career professional in TV and is bored. They are the person who is in the entertainment space. And all of these people are around every day. So I really, I love the the point that you've made there as far as actually getting behind LinkedIn because I get, I think I get 200 emails a day. Now, my favorite, favorite, favorite time of the day is at about 4.35 in the morning when I get rid of my first 50. I don't even open them. I just look at what the title is. I look at who it's from. And I do click, 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 click. 50 gone. So I'm now down to 150. And that's why you never respond to my emails. No, but it's okay. They're all all like junk stuff, right? My next 50 are ones that I can see that are not directed to me. They are spammy. They're ones that are sent out to lots of people. Delete, 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 because there's no expectation from me to to interact with them, right? And then I bring it down to my 50 or 60 or whatever it is that are personal emails that need to go back. And I believe most people are like this. So to your point on LinkedIn, just sending out a thousand LinkedIn emails to people that you don't know saying, I've got a great, I get them all the time. I have, now it's ICOs. I have a phenomenal ICO. We're worth $500 million. We're looking to raise $20 million. This is delete. I don't know this guy. Like, why does this person do this to me? However, If I'm in a communal space and I'm introduced to someone or I see somebody who's in the coffee area and I say, what do you do? Where are you working? Oh, let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing. This is the stage we're at. This is why we're here. This is what we're raising. And if you come across anyone who you believe would be good as a partner for us, please let us know. I'll be around. Here's my card. Oh, better than that. Nothing's changed since the early days. It, it doesn't change, but better than that, we, I would like, like this this wonderful podcasting thing that we've got going on here. We have it in the village. I want the villagers, if you want to talk about, publicize, you've got all of those things. You've got to get your message out there with people. You've got to meet people. It, you, if you're going to do your spamming LinkedIn, which I don't advise on, yeah. at least do it in a space in your downtime when you're around people who are helping you, you know, move forward. Yeah, and you actually also brought up another interesting point there, which is influence level. Influence level has become really important over the last, maybe it's been important for five years, right? But for us, for the last six, 12 months, we've noticed the likes of the Kylie Jenners, who's obviously the youngest billionaire now in LA. We've noticed with the other, the NBA players who are getting deeply involved and we're watching products that are associated with these people move much quicker, not because they're better products, but because they have the influence level with them. So you're absolutely right. A startup these days, it is not enough to have investment and a great product because the problem with investment and a great product is the cost of Facebook ads, Google ads. It's too damn expensive, right? You need to have more pillars to actually bank your business on. And influence level is one of those. So one thing you're right is me mentioning it in the kitchen. Another thing is that same person then hearing from a friend, hey, did you hear the podcast the other day about how to do better marketing, about how to be more efficient, about how to X? And then your name is mentioned multiple times, which means your trust level goes up, which means there's a higher propensity for investment. Absolutely. I've listened. The most brilliant thing about being in the co-working business and doing running the village for so many years now is, as I say, we've seen this happen. I've seen people to come in. I've seen it. Co-worker. Co-worker. And they get the desk, dedicated desk, and then it goes to a small office, and then it goes to, and then what we love is they move out. They're too big a company. I've seen that. I've seen we've seen people like Glam Squad in this in our space. Yeah, who are a phenomenal success. Phenomenal success. All of these things, all of all of it going on, and within the space, and we in the village, and we, and and this is the truth of it. 
we do kind of get involved with everybody. We have a bit of a family as such. And, and, and we understand what it's like for businesses. We've helped businesses in their tough times. Why? Because we know we want our, our businesses to make you guys succeed. We're, it's almost like we're, it's, we're part of it. Do you want to say I've seen come? So we've seen our fair's degree of hiccups when things people are very close and they're a couple of months away and they're working day and night. They don't have the fun. We're like, okay, guys, whatever we can do to help you because it's important for us that they are doing very well. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, and I don't like, you know, we've even done this with clients when we've said, oh my God, I don't know if we can be here any longer. And we're like, what's going on? Because it's about communication. And we're like, no, we believe in you. Hold on, you're going to get that contract. Don't worry. Yeah. Just, do, you know, and that's also what we've done. We've had people stay with us for years because of that. And it's very, very nice. So we understand it. Listen, I've done it myself. So it's one of those things when you've been through all the things that all of the startup people go through. And I totally understand it from from being one myself. It, you can I'm in a process of. Helping that, which Can is so, duck at, so uh, nice. And by the way, we're gonna this this whole podcast today is gonna be the power of the support economy. It's about how do you create the right support. And by the way, for those of you listening who are thinking, "Well, Brian, that's all very well and good, but I can't afford a big expensive office." What do we? What can somebody start with in the village? Four hundred dollars. Like a couple of hundred bucks a month. Are you okay. kidding me? Like a couple the of hundred. Access to food, drink, network. Uh, don't even mention the free bar, right? Every, every, you'll like be filled. You, if you if you tell everybody breakfast. about the free bar you have there, then you'd be, be filled with Irish people, and you don't want to do, do you that. You know, we right? couldn't do this in Ireland because <laughs> or in. London, I have to say, it's like me having a dig at Brian. Like we're like all of a sudden we're so good. I always said we, I'd be out of business within one week. Within one week, it'd be like, be like, oh, it's over. It's a free bar. <laughs> we're going in. But it was genius putting it here because it's like an honesty system that people come in and they don't want to abuse because it's the entire community, but they do want to enjoy it. They've got to enjoy. You've got to enjoy yourself. You've got to be. You've got to feel good about yourself and your business. Know you're doing well. Be around people that's going to make that happen for you. And be in an environment. All the, you know, if all the. If you want money, you've got to surround yourself with money. I mean, I'm being frank, but it's it's you know, it's that kind of it's the energy. I'm not talking about the physical people because you were surrounded by lots of people, and it's not as crass as that. But it's about your vibe and your energy and the energy of the people around you and all of that it's your if if you surround i won't say money success yeah and if you surround yourself with people who are brilliant and successful and creative and driven it's not us it's not yeah. the village it's the villagers yeah and that is what i see all around me every single day but many and other that is the energy that attracts investors but let's speak about does. the opposite energy because there are many entrepreneurs who start a businesses and they're slightly introvert. Like so, it's not their problem. So we have, we have, we have the different personality types of entrepreneurs. I am obviously an extrovert business development person, which means I'm great at this, but that doesn't mean I'm good at logistics. Actually, I'm terrible at logistics, and it doesn't mean that I'm good at creativity. I'm probably mid on creativity, right? So let's take an entrepreneur who's amazing at creativity, possibly more introverted because they're so incredibly creative, not particularly strong on business development, as are people people who are creative and maybe okay with logistics. So what I see a lot is that, especially when we opened up our space years ago for people just to come in when they were early stage and we wanted to get them ready and we were just breaking into the community. I would see them come in with their headphones. They put their headphones on. They sit at a desk and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like if you, if you have busy work to do, do it at five o'clock in the morning. Do it from five till eight when there's nobody else around. But during the day, you better hustle like crazy and build something great because if you don't have a lot of people knowing what you're building, then how, how, how can you build a support community to actually build it? I don't know if that was a comment or a question, but it's friggin' important. Very, very important. It's very, very, you can't do, you can't do everything on your own and your team's never going to be big enough, like right at the beginning, to have all the skills and discipline and multi-talents that you've got. Sometimes you've got people who are quite good at doing lots of things because you're in that mode, but you yeah. haven't got the specialists. But it'd be amazing when you bump into the specialists because they're actually working for this company down the road and you've just, oh, just had your cup of coffee. What are you up to? Oh, I'm just designing user experiences. 
for a big something, this, that, and the other. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just doing, I'm just filming this amazing pot. I'm doing esports, or I'm, you're going to find that around you with brilliant people. So it doesn't matter if you're an introvert because everyone's got different skills. If you're not creative, amazing, you'll bump into people who are creative. If you're creative and you're not very structured and you don't know how to do all of the logistical side of it, which is a lot of it, you've got people that you'll meet that help you that with those things. You know, people with skills and experience, very important to have that. And LA, as a city, it's one of the reasons why I did this business is I came from London and I worked in media. And I worked in Soho, which is an amazing square mile of a city where you walk everywhere and you bump into everybody in your industry from all different levels. So a lot of business and opportunity is happening by chance and counters. Oh, hello, Brian. How you doing, man? You want to have a cup of coffee? Oh, and then you wouldn't know what I met. And this person's doing this job. You should ring up that person. Lots of conversations and chance encounters. Now, I know the Internet has taken over a lot of that. But as I say, there's something about being around an environment where that happens. LA is such a big car city that when I came over here, it was like when I had to have meetings to do TV shows. I could have two meetings in a day because I've booked an appointment with my manager, has got me a meeting with somebody else in Burbank, and then I've got something else, and then you've got a coffee with somebody else. You've done two things. It's not very, it's part of the process. Wouldn't it be better if there was this really cool place where you could all just go to? And you're all coming to the same spot. And that's where I believe the whole co-working in this community has actually come out of and why it's doing so well here in Los Angeles with all the talent and, and brilliance that's going on around here. Hey, there's money and there's talent and there's brilliant, brilliant ideas in tech and, and numerous other businesses all going on around here. Listen, let me talk a little bit about you. Um, so the journey has to have been difficult. Building a co-working empire from zero, it is tremendously cash intensive to rent the space, to fit out the space. And look, in our space here, you know, we've got a couple of eggshells inside a fridge. You have one of the most beautifully designed co-working or it's not even co-working, it's like 50% co-working, 50% offices. So you have the most beautifully designed shared office space or flexible space that I've ever seen. And then you also have to build into the, to a fact that people have to get to know you and you have to build up the business. How difficult was it for you to raise the money when you first did that? Bloody awful. But I did it bloody right, though. I, I, it, it took so many bloody years to do that I ended up doing it the right way. Um, and it was slower. It, you know, my business is a slower, more. It's not it's not it wasn't ever going to be this quick. Bam, I'm going to make you returns. It was like, it's a lot of money to raise for a very steady return. Yeah. You know, and, you know, so that in itself is a slow, slower model. It's not you put your money in and it's quick fix and it's a different. It's we have a lot of support for the tech industry, but we're not a tech business. Right. I mean, it's very I mean, that we're, we're a community space. We're about experiences. We're about helping those companies. But that's not our company. It's a different form of company. So I. That's so you start off with a brilliant idea. Now, yeah. I've always, that's no problem. Yeah. You know, I was a director, been a producer. An idea is an idea, whether it be a script or a physical space and a business idea. What do you have to do? Have an idea, then pull a team around you to people who share your vision, take them along the way and have that utter belief that you're, you can do so. You have to have that in a voice when everyone says no or enough people say no I'm not going to put money in that you get up in the morning and you can still you turn up because your vision is strong enough to to see it through so I've been lucky because of directing to be able to do vision work as such put something out there and I've seen things happen on the screen so the idea of creating something was fine and I mentioned that I think at the beginning mm -hmm. you created a unique brand that didn't exist in the market and you showed a reason why it was going to be tremendously important. So once you did that, you go looking for a partner, you go looking for investors. Well, we started smaller. I went with a big idea of trying to get a hold of my big vision, like straight away. This is the big vision. And guess what? I lost a lot of money in the process. In fact, I lost a lot of time and money. Yeah. Huge on legal fees. The lawyers got me because I set up things. And because there were people out there also who bullshit and be very careful. There are a lot of people out there, particularly here in L.A. and being all naive English that I was. You take people at their word and a lot of people, they can smell that you're desperate for money. It's the thing. Don't yeah. You've got to learn not to be, you yeah. know. It's yeah. a whole psychology thing. But anyway, I got burned. 
But in the process, I'd done a lot of work. I went into a co-working space. I spied on the few things that were going on. Yeah. I tried. I went around every single property. I you understood get, your competition. I was like looking at my competition and really working at it every single day. So the opportunity came upon, and one of the spaces that I was in, that then I then. I took over it. I got my foot in the door. Yeah. I thought, okay, my big, this is my big vision of what the co-working in the future is going to be like. Okay, I didn't quite get it, the money. Okay, I'm going to start small. I'm going to prove my model. I'm going to prove that I can run a business. It's not just about having a vision. This was what I've learned. It's about actually, in my case, how are you going to look after somebody? What goes on when they can't do their rent? How are you going to help them when the internet goes down? All these things. How do you make it seamless? How do you make the experience wonderful? What are the things that people are looking for how are you going to get events these are all things that i had to do and learn yeah. and do myself to keep a small group of people happy and then what happened was i kept the big vision going knowing what i've got now i've got a space small space not making the returns but proving to investors they go okay we know you've got vision but you've just proved to us oh Look, you've learned how to run the business for a number of months. You appeal oh, to their greed. You've you've increased your revenues. Not massive revenue, but I can see that you're starting to learn what you're doing. And remember this, however great the idea is, investors are looking at your numbers. They're looking at their returns. There's lots of great ideas out there. And you might have a very similar idea, but what might make you better is they're betting on you and that what your work ethic and what how you learn and what you do at what your process is investing in the people just as much as it's investing in the business. Absolutely the case. So then I started the business. Then I did the the bigger one. And that was very ballsy, putting your life on the line. You think you're doing well. And signed a humongous lease and signed a lease. And I did not have all the money. So really and truly, I really did put... Yeah. Yeah, I, there was a laugh that my my wife and I, Sophie and I, used, people used to laugh. They go, "If it all went wrong, you know, what would you be doing?" And we really used to say, "We'd be tap dancing on Main Street," <laughs> and everyone laughs. Oh, it's so funny! And then we were like, "No, no, no, it's not a no. We, that's exactly what we'd be doing." We were like, "What could we do? Like, what, what?" Do we, but we put everything in. But that we knew, what we, we really felt we did all the research. We, you know, when you put so much in, you get it. And then to as it was going on. You're raising money as it goes along. There is a big... I got lots from friends and family and friends of friends of family people talk. And then that all happened and it pulled together. And now I'm in the same stage where the business is bigger, but it's a very different game now. Once yeah. again, there's models that have been proved. But now I now see investors in a very different way. The, I don't have the hunger that we had the last time. It's not a desperation thing. That was the thing that I found very difficult, funny enough when raising money the last time. Yeah, it's actually, because you know, it's very hard to pretend, right? And I think a lot of our entrepreneurs who are listening to the podcast are in the same place. Sure, people talk about fake it till you make it, but I've never been a big fan of it. I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of, you know what, let's just prove it out. Let's prove it out on a level that we can right now. Let's actually respect the fact that the money we're getting from people has to, they have to get a return. I mean, if it's friends and family, man, they can't lose their money. I, I don't want to go to Christmas no, dinner in any of their houses. Friends and happens. family is the hardest because you've got to remember this. And I'm, I, I'm very lucky. I've got a great business partner who's been a mentor to me. And he and he's always he, he would always go in and list from your point of view. Sometimes you're thinking, as a, I'm going to make them an amazing return. They're going to do very well. But you've also got to think about. You know, what happens when it doesn't go wrong? Yeah. What are you going to do then? To me, that's the most important thing. Those investors at the beginning are your key investors. They've got a faith in you. They're not just investing in the business. And they, they really, and, and, and it is about who you meet and the look in the eye. It's very, you know, it's tough. And yeah. it's very important. And it's hard for people to do it. It's, yeah. So I, I, I think for for everybody listening, and again, I just, I love to summarize the important points for you when looking for your investment. Number one, just embrace the shared community. Don't believe this is about a bunch of emails or going to a few events and hoping that they turn. You have to actually start building relationships with people in the same area that you're in. And if you're in an entertainment, if that's the product that you have, you want to surround yourself with people who are around the entertainment space. Same with technology, same with AI, same with VR, whatever it is, make sure you're in a space that you can start to build your influence within that space. Then take that influence level that you're building and try to 
find methods that people can actually hear from you on different platforms, whether it's starting a podcast like this, which I endure, whether it's writing a book, whether it's making sure you're on Quora, whether you're on Medium, whether your Twitter following increases or your Facebook following goes up or whether your Instagram posts get a tremendous amount of likes. You need to be visible to your public as someone who is becoming a thought leader in your space or you need to bring yourself, bring other people in to actually help you to do that. And then the area that Ollie's just gone into right here, I think is almost the most interesting, which is that the leaders and the influencers and the investors in your community, the people who have not just the spaces, but the areas that you go to and you look to and think, my goodness, I mean, you're someone that I'm not afraid to speak to, but I look at as, as that level which is above me. You have to remember, and Ollie's just spoke very humbly about it in a way that he went through, is they've been through, all of us have been through exactly what you go through. The more authentic you are about the circumstances you have, the more time that you put into proving out your model, the more that those people are going to want, no, they're going to need you to be a success for them very selves. They're not going to want to lose money, right? They're going to want to make money. But if you're true to who you are and what you're trying to achieve, they're going to want to help you because they're going to want to help you as well. Is that fair, Ollie? Well, I've, I completely believe that totally. You have to be in, it's integrity, it's openness. People, it's natural. People want to help people. They like. They like, and who are, and you like people. People like you always a little bit more when you show your vulnerabilities yeah. sometimes. It's kind of the hardest thing people can do is to show their own vulnerabilities. And sometimes it's the, those ways that people kind of softens people and they, they you, one immediately knows it when it's happening. I always remember, I had this, I had this one chap who I met, oh, going back to the early days, and he was a very high-profile figure, had written books, been on TV, he was a big guy in this space. And we got into this conversation, and I, and I felt it moving to the, who's got the bigger one? Uh, it got there very quickly. But when he mentioned about his Ferrari and how he can take his Ferrari from zero to 60, and I mentioned to him that like I can take my Mazda 7 from zero to 60 in about two days, but we're really working on building some turbo into it. It just, it disarms, right? It takes it to a place where he's yeah, like, totally. oh man, maybe I'm you a know. dick, I'll, just for a second. And let's just take this to, we're human beings, and where do we go to? So look, this is tremendously important for, for everybody listening. Make sure you're building the relationships that can grow your business. And I always like to add in a pay it forward touch in there as well. If you continually just go to the kitchen of the co-working space and you continually say, hey man, I got a company, we're a tech company, we're raising a million bucks. Hey, you know anyone who can give me a million bucks? It's just not that cool. But if you go there and say, I want you to know who I am. I want you to know my product in case you run into someone that it's really good. I have to tell you, we really need to raise money in the next two or three months because we know that the capabilities are phenomenal here. But before I do all of that, I would feel a dick just walking away doing that. So can you just tell me a little bit about what you do? Because I have a huge network. And if I can find someone who can help you with something, I would love to do that as well. It's the power in paying forward. It is the power in helping other people. It's the power. Oh, excuse me. That's my wife on the phone. I just dropped her. It's not going to be very happy right now. <laughs> You're in trouble. Like, in oh, no dinner for oh, Ollie tonight. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the power of paying it forward. And paying it paying forward was, was forward. when you and I when we first met. really became strong to pay together. Pay it forward. Right? Pay it forward. And it's a sentiment that you believed in. It was, I remember, your your brand ethic was pay it forward. The I actual brand, it, you, which it is, pay it forward. But it was, it was, it's been your motto that you've kind of lived and that everything you've done has been to pay it forward. You introduce people. I've learned that actually from my old industry. This has been the most joyful part of doing what I do now. When I was a director or a producer and I'm in the entertainment industry, I had to go to a party. 
to sell myself. I'm another director in town with another brilliant idea. Like there's so, another great talented director with another brilliant idea. It's not that the idea wasn't brilliant or that I wasn't a talented director. There's a lot of us, okay? And you're going out and you're meeting people to think, oh, how can they help me? I meet this, but I can't meet people if it's not with integrity. Yeah. I could meet someone as a mate who so happens could be like the most brilliant person for me and we could be best mates. But if I was told to meet that person because they might be able to help me, yeah, I felt I would get all insecure. I just would. I find it very uncomfortable. Yeah. What I love now is what I do now is the complete opposite. And weirdly enough, and ironic, ironically, I've got better contacts in the entertainment industry now than I ever had. Like, people will pick up the phone straight away. And it's quite funny because it's just of the way, and because I'm helping everybody. If I meet somebody, it's how can I help them? Ah, oh, that's it. What do you do? Oh, that's it. What are you developing as something on this? Oh, my God. I think I met somebody three weeks ago at a party. You know, you two should meet and you just may nothing come to nothing. It's that whole thing of how I can help other people. Yeah. And since trying to help and pay it forward with other people, the amazing thing is it's all come. It comes back. It just it's karma, man. It comes back. That's a bit of a California But this is thing. tough now. Because and it's like, true. Because what do we call it? We call this this podcast. Is it the power of paying forward? Is it the power of the support network around you? Is it the power of your authentic brand that you're going to do? Man, I'm all mixed up. It's the power of being part of a village. It's the power of being part of a village, which actually combines all of those, all of those together. Things, man. I, I actually don't. I want to leave it on that point. And um, can you share? And I got to, actually. I don't want to leave it on this point. I want to. I want to say like I've known Ali since the days when Expert Dojo was pay it forward, and from that moment, I have never met anybody who is so aligned with the pay it forward principles. The fact that you created a space, a communal space that became known as the village, that you even changed from the working village to the village because you wanted that to be the epicenter of how and where business families are made, I think is is brought you to their natural space. And maybe with me coming to Expert Dojo, it's brought me to our natural space. And I almost wish and I hope that all entrepreneurs who are listening are pursuing a path and a truthful journey that's taking you to what was meant to be, not just some bullshit thing that you're building just for the sake of building it or because you're doing it for someone else. Build something beautiful, which was the destination you were always supposed to go to. Is that nice? That's really lovely. I think you've just wrapped the program beautifully. Oh, man, we have to wrap it with happen. we have to wrap it with details of the village. Ooh, ooh, How do they ooh. find you? No, email I've got address. more things. I've got to do my plug, everybody. Okay, hit, hit us. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I'm uh-huh. saying. That's, that's what we wrap it with. Okay, podcasters, people that listen to podcasting, and all podcasters. The village is all about podcasting, okay? And just to put that fact out there, the Outlier Podcasting Festival in Los Angeles is going to be on the weekend of Saturday and Sunday, September the 29th to 30th at Village Workspaces. And it's going to be sponsored by KCRW, Earbuds Podcast Collective, Pod News, Digital LA. We've got Stitcher. We've got all the biggest brands. We've got some of the biggest podcasters in LA. And it really is the biggest indie podcasting festival in America. It goes on in Austin, Texas. It's just come from Utah. It's now going off to New York after us. And we're hosting the LA one. Now, all, all... all anybody to do with expert dojo okay anybody immediately gets 20 percent off with the outlaw podcaster festival ticket with the key the code earbuds if they put in the word earbuds immediate 20 percent off to anybody through expert dojo is that okay how do they find the invite For the invite they can come to villageworkspaces.com yeah and they just can look Twitter under events right and look at me, I'm so bad but at But they the just they, they come on, they just come on to yeah. events on, on the village on the village workspaces.com. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the next Thursday, if anybody wants to come to our live podcast recording of the legalization of weed, they can come, have a nice time. There'll be drinks and things like that, and great pod live podcast on a very big business and things that are changing around here. And also just so you know What about somebody looking anybody for, for a workspace? to do podcasting and anybody for a workspace and any startup 
We are, listen, what we do with our, our officers are available. We're very lucky at the moment. We're very, very full. But yeah. we're always seeing people. We're always seeing people for co-workers as well. And I have to say, we inter- it's, it's a little that we're, we cap our membership. And so it's always this lovely thing of coming in, your tour, you fill out your form, and then we like have a meeting about, we want you to fit into the community. Yeah, we want it to work for you. It's not for us about getting everybody in. It's never been about that. I, I always us. felt you're more of a Soho house. We are much more of a... It's like co-working, but it's like a private members club. I like to say it's exclusive because it feels exclusive. But my son said something which is so right. And he said, I hate the word. He said, but dad, exclusive's really bad. He said, you're inclusive because you let everybody, you're like that. You're, it's like, I don't want to be a snob. And he, he's totally right. I don't, so it's, listen, I'm struggling branding myself. All I know is it's bloody nice. You're the right type okay. of inclusive. Okay. That's all I can say. And also we're massive on podcasting. We can help any company in any startup business if you've got an idea you want to get it out there that we can get you podcasting podcasting your product it's a very good way of getting social get increasing your marketing spend at a very 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 low dollar and i really I mean it you know this and i do this and we're we are the only co-working space dedicated to helping with every one of your podcasting needs yeah um so they can catch you uh, and if they want to catch you they can catch me on linkedin and things like that Look at me. They can just catch me from coming into the space where I will meet them and pour them a glass of beer and a coffee and a tea. How about that? Anybody's welcome. Okay? And that's what I say. I love it, mate. You're a great giver to the startup community. You always have been. Uh, congratulations in your journey and what you've done uh, you and me would be compadres forever for sure and just for everybody listening today this is a really nice slight detour into creating the right community creating forget the right community creating the right village so that you as the head of the village can actually get what you need to achieve thanks Ali thank you very much indeed that's a wrap buddy Thanks for joining us. If you know any other entrepreneur equally ambitious as you, then share this podcast by paying it forward to other entrepreneurs who are building your own army. Now, as always, our website, expertdojo.com, is packed with information to help you grow your business, find investment, and train for victory. We also walk our talk and invest in startups every year in our accelerator here in Silicon Beach. You can always reach out to me at brian at expertdojo.com and I look forward to being back here again at our regular time next Tuesday, 10 a.m. with another of the world's top investors helping you win the war against startup failure.